<laughs> How about that new intro there, folks, huh? Yeah. Had a young man do that for me. Did a really nice job. Um, anyway, my name is Don Gennetti, lighting-essentials.com and project52prosystem.com. Uh, Project 52 is a training system for photographers. If you're interested, there's a link down below. I'm doing this series called What Makes This Photo Great? This is number 19, and the photographer is Mark Hauser. Now, this is not a comprehensive view of all great photographers. There are so many. This is a view of the people who influenced me, the people that I love, the people that I would seek out, the folks I would buy the books from. I own a couple of Mark's books. His work inspired me. It challenged me. Uh, it just made me want to be a better photographer. Uh, Mark is from Chicago. Uh, never, never got a chance to meet him when I was in Chicago, although we came close. Uh, and it's too bad. Um, we've lost Mark, and uh, that's a real tragedy to the photo industry. But I'm going to tell you what I liked about Mark's pictures, and I'm going to show you 10 pictures that I liked from Mark and what I think makes him great. I'm not a photo historian. I don't want to be. I'm just telling you how they affected me. Mark uh, primarily worked in black and white. I know there's a couple of color pictures floating around, uh, but as the work that I enjoyed was black and white, and maybe it was because of that affinity that I have to black and white, and I would choose black and white over color if I only had the opportunity to shoot one uh, uh, material in the future, I would choose black and white over color. I love black and white. I always will. And uh, Mark shot primarily in monochrome. And we're going to take a look at some of his images and some of the images that really uh, hit me over the head. Mark did a book called Halloween in Bucktown, which I uh, saw and fell in love with. I own the book. Mine's falling apart. Uh, but it's a fantastic view of kids in Bucktown, which is a suburb of Atlanta, doing their Halloween. And he's uh, photographing them in front of this old uh, beat up canvas that he used to love to shoot against. And it's uh, so fascinating, just absolutely fascinating work. So let's start out with a portrait of Aaron Copeland, one of my favorite composers, except for that that uh, Rodeo thing. Never did much care for that, Aaron. But still, you you did write a uh, bunch of other stuff I like. So, uh, awesome portrait. Look at the lines in the portrait. Look at the lines coming up here. The necktie, the off-kilter head, that soft material for the background. And look at the light, how it wraps all the way over to here. Do you see that? Big, soft light source gets all the way over to the other side of the nose. Yeah, we've got a nose shadow. We've got a shadow from the lips so we can see the direction of the light, which is important. We've got shadows here under his arms. We can see all of this stuff. There's a lot of direction to the light. There's a lot of power to the light, but there's also this beautiful softness that wraps all the way around to the other side. This is one of the things that Mark is very well known for, uh, single and possibly only two lights. Single light for the subject, a light for the background, and that's about it. Uh, you, can, you can just see, I think, in the eyes, a, uh, a sense of respect from one artist to another here. Just love it. Here's a portrait to give you an idea of that one light coming in from the left here. You can see it going all the way through. You can see how big a light it is. Look at the, look at the highlights on the shirt. Do you see that? That's all reflection of the of the the light. Now we got a light going over here. We got a little kicker light going over here, and we've got a light on the background, um, and that's pretty spectacular, you know, pretty cool, the way it's it's lit. But look at the line. Look at the sofa comes over right here, right through the shoulder, breaks right through the shoulder there. But the shoulder doesn't create a tangent with it. It moves up and it creates this head floating in this nice space above here and the hand going up to the head, leading us up into the forehead. I'm not a big fan of hands on faces, but when you do it right, it can be spectacular. When you do it wrong, it just looks terrible. I tell my beginning students, uh, if you're shooting with models, tell them to keep their hands away from their face. They 
don't know how to do it yet, and so it doesn't look all that great. Plus, every time they do it, they 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 do it wrong, and we see this great big hand in front of their face. But in this particular case, it's being done right. Uh, and look at the look at the line. Look at the hand comes all the way over here, right out of the frame. Isn't that great? This is a jazz musician, and this is something that uh, that Hauser used. These are two flats with uh, canvas on them, and the canvas is wrapped on the on the flat, so he could set this up as a background, and it'd be eight feet wide, just open it up flat. But then he started making these little, I don't know what you would call little cave-like things, where the the two walls come together and putting the people in it. Look at the amazing way. It has a subject look. And look at how beautifully the light bounces off these lighter. Now, they're not white. They're very bright. But look how the light bounces off and look what it does to the subject. Come on, that's cool. You got to say that's cool. Isn't that amazing? Uh, because Mark had one, I had one. Mine was a little bit different. I didn't totally copy him, but I still loved using that, that, uh, that pinched board or whatever you'd want to call it. Uh, coming in. It's uh, it's spectacular how it works. I want you to notice something else, too. I want you to notice the, the angle of the camera. Do you see that the, the camera is really sitting about there, looking right straight across about there? It's not standing up. He's not standing up. He's looking down through a viewfinder of a Hasselblad or RB. I don't know what he shot with. I don't care. Um, or he's sitting down. Uh, most of Mark's work was done well. This is a four by five, so you can see this this angle of the of the camera coming down. You can see the slight wide angle lens. It's really really amazing. I think if we go back up here as well, you'll see that the center of the camera is there. It's not up here. It's there. It's straight across. That's one of the reasons I like uh, medium format cameras. By the way, is the ability to get that thing down to waist level and shoot. I'm going to do a video on why I think uh, there's such a difference between 35 millimeter, uh, medium format, large format, and of course the new holding your holding the camera away from your eye thing like an iPhone or a Fuji or something. Here's John Mellencamp, who was a big supporter of uh, Mark and um, helped arrange some, some things for his funeral. Uh, Mark shot Mellencamp many, many, many times. Look at this portrait. Holy mackerel, look at this portrait. Look at the eyes. Look at the mouth. Look at the relaxed nature of it. Look at the hair popping up. See, I always look at the hair because, God, I wish I had hair like that. But I look at the light. There's no fill. There's no desire for fill. He's not like... You know, doing a photo class where you got to have a fill and a kicker and a hair light and all that BS. He's just capturing Mellencamp in the most graphic, simple, light versus shadow way possible. It's, you know, I saw this this picture and I'm like, oh, God, I want to shoot stuff like that and, and have it be this powerful. Uh, Mark was a brilliant black and white printer. I was pretty good. I was probably never to the level that I should have been, uh, but I was pretty good. He also did fashion and beauty, a fashion shot. Look at the hair, all swept up. Boy, that's an 80s, isn't it? Um, you may recognize the, and know who this is. Um, beautiful, beautiful photograph. Isn't that amazing? Look at the line. Look at that shoulder, dipping that fore, fore shoulder all the way down. It just makes it stunning. It just pulls you into the fo the photograph. Her head being up, her shoulder being down. Very much an affected pose, but it really, really works. Um, just knocked out by this 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 kind of work. This look at the soft tones. Not amazing. You might recognize this gentleman. He played basketball. That's right. Great Michael Jordan is this and look at this incredible shot. Wow. Look at the shoulders coming up and the hands coming wrapped down here. He's coming right into the to the arm here. And he's 
he's not cropping into the top of that head. Beautiful, bald Michael Jordan head didn't crop into it, let it come right out there. Look at the light. Michael's looking towards the light. It's a little bit more to the left of him, but it reads right across the face. Look at that, just right across the face. This is a large light source, folks, a large light source. Uh, no, no fill that I can see. I can't see any reflection on Michael's head or his hand here and skin being uh, semi-efficient. We should see some sort of reflection and there isn't. I love the way uh, uh, photographers do this, by the way. This is something that uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of and did all the time. And that is I put a dark background on the side of the lit side of the face and a light background on the side of the shadow and look what it does it creates so much dimension doesn't it it's just very 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 incredible technique simple to do great response uh he didn't get outside much but when he did he did shots that kind of looked like he would have done them inside uh portrait out outside i don't know exactly what it was for but it's a uh very interesting picture. Notice the dead center monolith, the person down below. Look at the geometry in this picture. We've got this, and we've got this, and we've got this, and we've got this horizon that comes right across here like this, uh, sticking up into the horizon. And we have our gentleman down here who's dead center. Composition is amazing. When you're dealing with a photographer, on the level that Mark Hauser is, understanding that there is no uh, error. There is no um, by chance. Mark is a consummate photographer. Even if he sets it up quick and does it quick, he knew exactly and deliberately what he wanted to do. Being deliberate is very, very powerful, folks. Really powerful. And it's something I encourage every photographer to do. Be more deliberate with your work. Don't get sloppy. Don't overshoot it. Be deliberate. Another use of the wall with this ballerina. Look at the light. Big, big soft light right over camera. Chopping the shadows behind her. Using that, that vertical line. Using these lines almost like leading lines, just like he did the musician. Leading lines up to her. Wow. I hope you guys are like as excited about the work as I am because I just, you know, I just love it. I was in Chicago twice and two times I went to his studio to meet him and two times I missed him. Uh, second time by, I was told, only minutes, but that was a really a disappointment for me because I really did want to meet him. Look at this photograph. Now, this is a a, um, a later photograph of Mark's and, and he started doing these... Uh, I imagine he did it quite a bit, but he had a whole series of these toned, very, you know, gold toned sepia and gold uh, duo tones uh, that, that I loved. Uh, I mentioned before, uh, many of you probably have not followed this channel for very long, but I've mentioned before that uh, for almost uh, eight years, my portfolio, my fashion beauty book, was all monochrome. I didn't say black and white. I said monochrome. I had yellow toned, blue toned, selenium toned. I had black and white. I had uh, duo tones where you'd you'd bleach it, uh, bleach the image after you printed a regular black and white. Bleach it, gold tone it, bleach it again, blue tone it, blue and gold tones. Uh, I had all kinds of different different uh, things and. Some of that, I think, was a little bit rubbed off because of Mark, uh, because of uh, his fascination with uh, toned and lightly toned and heavy toned images. Here we got one more here. This is a great portrait. Look at this. Can we have the uh, reflection of the softbox on the glasses? Well, you can if you make it work like this. Oh, hell yeah. Notice the dark side of the background and the lit side of the background, dark side of the, the face side of the face. It's all part of the plan, folks. It's all part of that deliberate creating of, of, of a, a little bit of dissonance and a little bit of, 
of gradient to give it dimension. So it's not this gentleman in front of a very flat wall. It's this gentleman in front of a wall that has dimension of light on it, and so it makes the entire image. Our brains know that it's lit over here and it's dark over here, therefore there must be another light in the picture, right? And if we think, well, there's another light, because then we go, oh, wait a minute, that light's coming from over there where it's dark, this light's, this is a dark side, it's going light. Our brains are doing this really, really quick. We're not even aware of it. Most of us aren't aware of what our brains are doing anyway. Uh, and we get this, this great look. Uh, it's a, a, a fantastic way to, to go. Uh, I think even in the shot of Copeland all the way back here, you'll see a little bit of darkness on the lit side of his face and a little bit of brightness over here on the dark side of his face. Now, in this particular case, Copeland is very close to the background. But uh, let's go through them again backwards from the bottom, shall we? we got this great portrait with the glasses. we got this gentleman with the beard. And you'll see darker, lit, lighter, shadow. Um, the incredible ballerina shot. A location shot. Michael Jordan, Cindy. That just, I'm sorry, that just knocks me flat out. I just love that portrait. A trumpet player. And I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. Great, great portrait here. And Aaron Copeland. So this is Mark Hauser. There's links down below to some videos and some some places where you can go and maybe even pick up a copy of uh, Halloween in Bucktown, which I think is a fantastic piece. And if you keep hold on to it long enough, I think it might become a collector's item. Thanks, everybody, for coming along. If you like what I did, hit that subscribe button. Don't you like it? Hit the subscribe button. You know the bell? I don't care about the bell. Bell's annoying. Screw the bell. Hit the subscribe. Let me know you're out there watching, and uh, I'll keep making these things. I'm going to make them anyway, because uh, these are the 50 photographers that influenced me the most in my career, and I'm just sharing what I learned. Everyone, have a great afternoon, great evening, great day, great week, great month, and we'll see you next time.